Olympia, Appalachia, and I am going to lead us through an entire pelvic stabilization workshop today that you can do to help support your yoga practice. This is part of my series that I teach ongoing for continuing education for yoga teachers on stabilizing the pelvis. There are physical elements to this, energetic elements to this, of course, with the bandhas, and um, biomechanical elements. So uh, let this be a good introduction to the movement sequence. Anybody can practice this, so long as you can lie on your back. We will start just with breath work, because believe it or not, the breath itself will help to deepen and stabilize what we consider the core, including the muscles of breath. So the diaphragm muscle, which co-contracts with the pelvic floor, the two diaphragms of the body there, the torso. Come into contact with that gentle rhythm. Notice here if your low back is pressing into the ground. And if it is, just first, before coming into breath, find a neutral pelvis. If you were to take your hands onto the two bones in the front of your pelvis and your pubic bone, you would want those three points even. A lot of times the pubic bone tips upward. So drive your tailbone toward the earth and find a natural but not exaggerated arch at your low back. Even breathing here like this, a little bit of heaviness at the two sitting bones, can be deep, deeply stabilizing for the body and the pelvis. And then we add to that natural breathing. So as you inhale, draw your breath into your ribs and into your belly and relax your pelvis, relax your energy at the pelvic floor. And as you exhale, feel a narrowing of the sitting bones, almost as though not just the sitting bones, but the two bones in the front of the pelvis could knit toward each other. And feel for your diaphragm releasing back up toward your lungs. So inhale, breath in, ribs expand, diaphragm presses into the belly, pelvic floor relaxes. Exhale, pelvic floor draws up, diaphragm releases up. Just learning to breathe so that you are not pushing your belly button to your spine on your exhalation can create huge patterns of stability for us. Rather than pushing your belly button down when you exhale, Think of what in yoga we call Uddiyana Bandha, or just basic anatomical breathing is exhaling, draw upward, upward toward the heart, upward toward the lungs. Let's accentuate this by bringing your hands to the side of your ribs, and you might feel more comfortable with your fingertips pointing down or your fingertips pointing up, but the true side of the rib cage, as you inhale, press your ribs out into your hands creating even more space side to side. And as you exhale, there's that same release upward of the belly, up the spine. Inhale, press your ribs out. Filling the front, the sides, and the back of the chest like the four parts of the container. Exhale, draw your belly back and up. Do that a few more times on your rhythm. Inhale, Ribs wide into the hands, grow into the space. Know that you are exercising and stretching here, so don't push your limits. Maybe tomorrow you'll do just one extra round or just a little bit wider into your hands. Move here on the wisdom of your strength. Last round. As you exhale, your low belly draws back and up. Release your hands to the ground. Can you still feel for widening your breath here? And letting your low belly move back and up. Tailbone is still heavy. If you'd like to slip into an ujjayi breath, a yogic breathing, you can. Otherwise, just keep your breath natural and free, expanding the rib cage to inhale and narrowing, lifting energy on the exhalation, feeling that drawing upward through the low belly. Not a pressure breath, just a release. 
And then we'll start to exaggerate this movement. As you inhale, tip your tailbone to the ground and arch your low back. And as you exhale, go the opposite way, round your low back to the ground. Again, try not to just push your belly button down. See if you can lift from the pubic bone to the navel, continuing that upward movement. Inhale, arch your low back. Send the front of the pelvis forward. And as you exhale, by engaging the inner thighs, by drawing the deep spine upward, tuck the low back to the ground. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round and tuck. A few more like that. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round and tuck. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round and tuck. Let's do that one last time. Inhale, arch. You can do this as many times on your own practice. Again, building the strength. Exhale, round and tuck, then pause. Keep your whole pelvis on the ground, but shift your weight into your left hip. We're going into pelvic circles. Tip your weight into your tailbone. You're back in the arch you were in a moment ago. But then shift your weight onto your right hip and then back around to your low back. I like to imagine a marble rolling into my left hip, finding a deep circle down to my tailbone, back around to my right hip, and then to my low back. Inhale to the left, and then tailbone arching. Exhale to the right, and back to the low back, tucking. Inhale to the left, tailbone. Exhale to the right, low back. Do that a couple of more times. Notice that your knees will move as your pelvis rolls. The more you allow your knees to move, the more you might notice a kind of stretching and releasing across the back and the pelvis. And the more you effort to keep your knees still, not totally still, remember, but just still er, the more you might touch into the strength at the front of the pelvis. Go the opposite way, into the right hip, tailbone, over to the left hip, and low back. Now, to challenge this more, other than manipulating your leg movement, you might think about pushing your shoulders gently into the earth, and keeping your chin level to the ground so it doesn't lift up. And if you actively Breathe into the back of your heart and your side ribs here. You'll feel how connected the neck and shoulder girdle are to the pelvis and the hips. Take one more circle to the right. Inhale all the way to the tailbone around. Exhale all the way to the low back around. Hold your low back down and then come back to neutral. Without tucking your pelvis, so hold neutral at your pelvis, push into your heels. Take a breath in, wide at the ribs, and as you exhale, feel that narrow and releasing, push into your heels and hinge, hinge up into a bridge pose. I like to think of my tailbone leading the movement. Let your tailbone get a little heavy and let your tailbone release back to hover off the earth when you come down. Lift back up, exhale deeply, narrow the inner thighs. You can do this with a block between the inner thighs if you're feeling weak there. Inhale to lower and hover. So adding a block doesn't mean that you're crushing the block. It just means that there's a firm squeeze. Deep connection from the inner thighs into the pelvic floor. Yes, it is connected. And then from the pelvic floor all the way up into the muscles that support the stability and length of the spine and the diaphragm. Do this one more time. Inhale, lift up, hinging, lowering all the way down. Now find neutral pelvis again, tailbone heavy, frontal hip bones and pubic bone in line. Push your weight into your left heel, get light in your right heel and then pick your right knee up into a tabletop. Not close into your belly, but straight above the hip. And step your right foot down. Pick your left knee up. If this is challenging for you, remember, this is exercise. 
build the strength intelligently. Even if you consider yourself strong, you might just practice this movement, just picking one knee up, feeling into the stability and strength, and then setting it down, picking the other knee up, feeling into the stability and strength, and then setting it down. And if you've graduated to that next level, when you pick one knee up, you'll change in mid-air to just tap a toe. Toe tapping here. Hold a 90 degree angle behind your knees. So it's not that you are bending your knee to tap the toe to the ground. You actually hold the back of the knee still and move from the upper leg bone. So here's what it would look like if I were to bend the knee and tap the toe. We're not doing that. We're holding that 90 degree angle and moving from the thigh bone. Do that one more time. If you're really feeling strong, you can bring your knees together and try that a couple of times. Together is much harder. And when you come down the next time, release. Take a breath in, exhale, hinge up into a tabletop. Hold here, driving your tailbone towards your knees, driving your knee energy forward. Ignite your glutes. But ignite your glutes in order to draw your glutes toward your thighs. Now you can stay like this, just holding a bridge pose. And if it's too hard, go back to the hinging exercises we did a moment ago. Otherwise, push into your left foot. Take your right knee up. Similar. Exhale, right foot comes down. And here we are in the same exercise we just did a moment ago, lifting one knee up without wobbling the pelvis, without dropping one hip to the ground. At first, when you're learning this, it's kind of nice to put your fingertips onto those frontal hip bones just so that you know from the feedback of your hands that you're not dropping one hip. Yes, you can straighten the leg when you bring it up and then set it back down. But just do this one or two more times before finding your bridge pose. And take a breath in your bridge pose, draw your tailbone forward, and as you exhale, hinge back down. Bring your knees into tabletop and squeeze your knees together, hands to the ground. As you inhale, tip your knees to the left, keeping your knees together, the right hip picks up. And as you exhale, bring it back to the earth. Inhale, same direction to the left, right shoulder squeezes. Exhale, think of the ribs returning, then the pelvis, then the knees. So it's a conscious return, inhale to the left. Exhale, conscious return. Yes, you can place the block between your inner thighs and feel how much the inner thighs are supporting the movement. Let's do this one more time over to the left. Inhale and exhale to return. Hold here, pause. Chin level to the ground, shoulders pressing. Touch into a breath wide at the ribs. Exhale, not pushing the belly button down to the spine, but letting it move up. And then inhale, knees tip to the right. Exhale, return to center. Inhale to the right. Exhale to center. Inhale to the right. Exhale, return the ribs, then the pelvis, then the knees. There's that conscious return. Maybe there's a block there between your thighs. Let's do this one more time all together. Inhaling and exhaling. If you need to step your feet on the ground, step your feet on the ground. Give yourself a break. Otherwise, imagine that you're actually squeezing your heels toward your sitting bones. So there's an energetic resistance happening and press your legs towards straight. Imagine you're kicking your shin bones to the sky, but bend your knees and bring your heels back to parallel with the knees. Again, heels squeeze energetically toward the hips, legs move towards straight. Again, shin bones kick energetically to the sky as you bend. Notice how much stability you're working here in your deep belly. You're not moving it. You're just stabilizing your legs as your limbs move. Do this one or two more times. And again, if you need a little bit of a rest, this is a good place to set the feet down and rest. Take a pelvic arch and tilt, especially if neutral is new to your low back. Feel a little release there. 
Then cross your right ankle over your left thigh and pick your left knee up. Again, you're not dropping that left heel. You're bringing it into a 90 degree angle at the back of the knee. Hands to the ground. This is the same exercise you did a moment ago. Inhale, tip to the left. This time, squeeze your right ankle into your left thigh. Exhale, return. Inhale, tip to the left. Squeeze, squeeze. Exhale, return. Three more times. Inhale to the left. Rather than pressing your right knee away from you, keep the right knee soft and let the squeeze be at the ankle against the left leg bone. One more time. Inhale to the left. Exhale back to center. Change sides. Left ankle over right thigh. Squeeze. Inhale to the right. Exhale, ribs return, pelvis returns, knees return. Inhale, across. Squeeze the ankle into the thigh and exhale, return three more times. Inhale. So can you feel how much stability has already worked in your belly here and you've not done a single crunch? Isn't that amazing? So this is deeper stability for the spine and for the muscles of the deep belly that stabilize us. Come back to center, squeeze, and then release your feet to the ground. Remember those pelvic clocks we did a moment ago? We're gonna mix it up a little bit. So this is at first a little confusing for the brain, but as you inhale, arch your back, and as you exhale, round and tuck. Let's do one clock to the left, all the way around, over to the right and back. Let's do one clock to the right, hip, tailbone, left, and then low back. Now, shift your weight into the left side of your low back, like you're about to go into a clock, but stop at the left side of the low back. As you inhale, send your weight straight across your sacrum and into your right sitting bone, coming into an arch. Exhale, round and tuck to the left side of your low back. Inhale, arch to the right sitting bone. This is very similar to the arching and rounding, the little rocks you did on the sacrum in the beginning of the sequence, but you've just tipped that line onto a diagonal. So you inhale straight across the low back to the right sitting bone, and you exhale straight across the low back to the left side. Inhale to the right sitting bone, exhale up to that left kidney. Shift sides, go over to your right low back. Hard to see this one, but as you inhale, straight to the left sitting bone. Now continue, round and tuck to the right side of your low back. Arch to your left sitting bone. Round and tuck to the right side of your low back. Can you notice that a lot of times when you do this movement, you're trying to go in a little semicircle, whether you realize it or not? Can you make the movement a straight line from the right side of the low back to the left sitting bone and then a straight line back to the right low back or kidney? Do that one more time. Inhale to the left sitting bone. Exhale to the right side of your low back and then find neutral. Give yourself a couple of breaths in neutral here. Hands to the ground. Hinge up into a bridge pose. Draw your tailbone forward and up. Give yourself a breath. and exhale lower down. Hug the knees into the chest. Maybe it's just one knee at a time. Totally okay to do that. Give yourself a squeeze. Then roll up and down your spine or tip to the side and press yourself up. And here's the last movement that we will do in the video. You'll bring yourself into a tabletop position. Bring your knees all the way together and push into the tops of your feet. Send your heart forward. Squeeze down into the tops of the feet. One more breath. Keep the toes touching. Bring the right knee out to the right. Now you're not tipping the pelvis. Keep your pelvis level to the ground and send the right knee back. Take your left knee to the left. Heart is forward and then bring it back. Right knee goes to the right. Inhale, exhale, return. Inhale, left knee to left. Exhale, return. Maybe the next round, you can pick the foot up with the knee. Otherwise, keep the big toes touching. Inhale, the right leg comes out. Exhale, return back. Now, there's a really fun thing you can do here if you have a book 
or a block, you can place it on your sacrum low back just to feel into whether you are tipping your pelvis. You want to keep your pelvis still, but then challenge how far out the knee is moving. Do this one more time. Take the left knee out to the left and then return. Knees hip width apart. Inhale, send your heart forward and exhale. Just press back so that you release onto your fingertips. Maybe stay on the fingertips as you come forward and again, stretch back. More back than down. Inhale forward, exhale back. Inhale forward, stay on your hands and knees, hands to the earth. Half cat cow, tip your tailbone to the sky, try not to move your chest. Just the pelvis is moving. Kind of like you were working the pelvic rocks on your back, tuck your tailbone to the earth. The upper back doesn't go with it. Inhale, just the tailbone to the sky. Exhale, when you tuck your pelvis, yes, your low back will want to follow the upper back. Try not to do that. Inhale, just the tailbone lifts up. Exhale, just the low back without the upper back following. Inhale, tailbone lifts. Exhale, it tucks under. Bring your pelvis to neutral. So pubic bone and frontal hip bones face the earth. Don't move your pelvis, same movement. Inhale, just the chest draws forward and through the arms. Exhale, just the upper back rounds. Lot less movement than you think it is, especially when the pelvis doesn't join. Inhale to arch. Squeezing your shoulder blades together, exhale, round and tuck. Draw your low belly toward your heart. Inhale, arch, shoulder blades draw down the back, heart forward. Exhale, round and tuck. So the peak pose to this whole sequence is cat-cow. When you come back to neutral, start at your tailbone and ripple through the whole spine. So much more freedom now that you're allowing the whole spine to move. Start at your tailbone, round it under, the whole back flexes. You can even do this on your fingertips if your wrists are tight. You can even do this on your forearms if the wrists still don't like it on the fingertips. Yes, it's going to be a little bit harder if you drop to your forearms, but maybe that's one way to deepen the movement. We're bringing the elbows down, you can feel the limitation here. Exhale, round and tuck. Inhale, arch the whole back. Exhale, round and tuck the whole back. One more time. Inhale, arch. Exhale, round and tuck. Whether you're on your forearms or on your hands, hold for a breath and then release to neutral. Right arm forward, left leg back. Three more breaths. Turn the left inner thigh up. If it's too hard, just do it with the leg. Try not to lift your left leg from your low back. Keep drawing the frontal hip bones toward each other and the pubic bone in line. Release. Change sides, right leg back, left arm forward. Again, if the bilateral movement is too much, the left hand can go down. Lift your right leg from your leg without tipping into your low back. Pubic bone draws energetically toward the navel. One more breath. Release. Cross at your ankles. Come back onto your back. Before coming into Shavasana, walk your feet together. Squeeze your knees together. Bring your hands down alongside your body. Without moving your left knee, Take your right knee out to the right. We did this face down, but you feel a little more control and knitting in now of the bones at the front of the pelvis. So squeeze those bones energetically toward each other, toward the belly button, like you're tightening a belt. And then move one knee out. Can you feel how the knee that's not moving kind of wants to tip out to the side? So the work here isn't actually in the leg that's moving, the work is in the leg that's still, that's stabilizing you. That's why this is such a great movement. Those of you that have done this a few times, 
Maybe you start to challenge the exercise. Don't underestimate it. Move slowly. And if you challenge it, you do this by taking the knees into tabletop. One knee moves out and then it returns. The other knee moves out. Remember, you're not going to flexibility. You're going to your edge of stability where you're not tipping your pelvis. Can you do this? One more full round on each side. And then when you return, set your feet onto the ground. Last bridge pose, hands down, hinge up, exhale, narrow everything. Three more breaths. Not pushing the pelvis to the sky, but drawing instead the tailbone toward the knees. Be a yoga rebel and use your glutes. Exhale, lower down. Release Shavasana, turn your palms to face up. Rest completely. Ata Yoga Anushasana. Yoga Chitta Vritti Narodaha. Here begins your practice. Stable, open, and soft through the belly. Notice for a couple more breaths the movement of the diaphragm and the pelvic floor working together, relaxing, contracting. Cleansing the organs, cleansing the subtle body. Thank you so much for practicing with me today. <laughs>